We had 10 million listens. Maybe 10 million listens, but uh, that's still it's still not good enough for us. So we want to grow it. You'll get better though, right? We want more. Yeah. We want 10 we're, billion. We're we're members. 10 billion. That's we want We want 10 reality. billion listens because we want like like 20 percent of the population to listen to it more than once. That's <laughs> so, right. Who, who's been your favourite guest so far? Because obviously you're picking out the intimate details of people's lives. Exactly. What's the most interesting thing you found out? Who's your favourite guest so far? You, you're my favourite guest. You're my favourite guest yeah. too. So basically there's a, seri- there's a serious bromance between you two, which makes the podcast amazing. Oh. Well, that's the core of the podcast. The core of the podcast, France and I, two best friends, doing a podcast, together, chatting with different people. Basically uh, character assassinating each other. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it. I tell you who's maybe Jamie Dimitri. If you ever watch he's, his TV I show. Think he's, he, he's definitely up there, one of the best episodes. He does an amazing TV show called Slap Let's Flat. He was also in Fleabag. I don't know if you watched Fleabag. He's very funny. He had the, uh, the funny teeth in that. <laughs> Let's talk pop stars. Yeah. Which pop stars would you just love to have on your Britney podcast? Spears. Oh, that's a good one. Fred, Fred, Freddie Ferrier. <laughs> yeah. Fred, you like Fred, 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 Fred Ferrier, the pop star. You would also his... like. We nearly had Boy George coming. Oh, we on. Had, well, we had. Um, we had. Uh, um, well, no, we had Freya Ridings, who's a very popular. Uh, she sings standing on the platform, watching that train go home. If you had Little Mix on, what would you ask them? I would say to them, uh, hey, how, how, yeah, how's it going? <laughs> That's what, that would be your first I don't have, That would be my opening question. <laughs> if you had Sean Mendes on, what would you ask him? Four Mendes? Sean Mendes. Who's Sean star. Mendes? You don't know I who he said is? Four Mendes. Who's Sean Mendes? You don't know who Sean Mendes, Mendes is? Mendes. I do. He's, yeah, I know. He's doing well. What? What? What industry is he in? <laughs> he's um, great British Bake Off. <laughs> <laughs> but you would ask him about how good his baking is. Sean Mendes. That's what you would ask him. Now there's been lots of chatter um, online and in the news about mental health and reality TV this week. Um, is reality TV a good thing? And does it help people's mental health by going on those types of shows? Well, it's interesting, right, because uh, people talk about mental health and, th- and these sort of things, and especially in, you know, with the sort of past that's happened with reality TV. You know, suicide is the biggest killer for males under 45 in the UK, in all industries. It doesn't matter if you're a baker, you're an artist, you're a movie star, you're a reality TV star, it's happening all over. Uh, and for such tragic events to happen and to be make the press, at least people are actually talking about that the fact that suicide is a huge killer for males. Um, but it's happening all over, and, and people really do start taking note of like their and looking after their mind, and looking after their body, and looking after their soul, and actually speaking about how they're feeling rather than bottling it up. I think that's what's so important. But yeah, I definitely think some people are maybe more vulnerable and uh, and need, need uh, more uh, more conscientious uh, duty of care from their agent or their the, the people who are producing their shows. Uh, because obviously these things shouldn't happen. They shouldn't be allowed to happen. No. Yeah, obviously, you know, you've done reality TV before. You get it, people are tweeting you sometimes nice things, sometimes bad things. You get a lot of hate, don't you? You get a lot of, a lot of hate. All mine's hate. How do you deal with all the hate? I love hate. I don't actually like love, I, I love hate. I don't care what everyone says about him. I like this guy. <laughs> What's the funniest thing a Twitter troll has said to you? What is the... The funniest thing a Twitter troll has said to you? Uh, I once had a 75 year old lady shout at me from a window saying I would ride your private parts like a rhino on speed (laughs) out of her car. That's what she said to me. A rhino on speed (laughs) in a car? No, she shouted at me from her car. That was quite quite flattered. I had to be flattered. Oh, did you get a number? Or? I did. I tried to get a number, but she, you know, I tried to find her on Tinder. I couldn't find her. It was really upsetting. Imagine trying to find someone on Tinder. Well, I, I, that would be difficult. I've tried. I've tried. But Love you know, life. Are you using Tinder right now? What's the deal? I, I don't use Tinder, no. <laughs> I'm old school. I go up and ask people on dates. Oh, is it on, on the street? You want to go on a date? The, uh, yeah, let's do it. All right. Be up for it? Only Where if you kiss on the first. Uh, I would take you bowling. <laughs> and then I would take you to a candle lit dinner. Okay. And then I would pour that candle wax all over you. Oh, what time does the night end then? Does it end up roughly? Uh, well, that would start at 8 a.m. And then we, I would finish at 1 p.m. Oh, but <laughs> that's, that's really yeah, respectable. Yeah. 8 a.m. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be the beginning of my day. You like candles in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only have candles in the morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.
stuff in the school at home, though. <laughs> no! <laughs>